Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the JWB Dynasty Digest, where we give you a consumable dynasty perspective. He's Skyler. I'm Wyatt, and today we are joined by Jagger. You can find on Twitter at Fantasy Blue Chip, a newly member of the Dynasty League football team. We are happy to have him here to talk about some free agency updates with us. But before we do that, let's roll that intro. He has the hearts of a lot of fantasy players. I like it a lot, honestly. I, like, I'm like, i in for death, taxes, and the 2022 water receiver class. I like what you were saying, Skylar. No, no player is completely untouchable. I think you guys really, I, had not, I have not really heard this yet. I listen to a lot of pods, and I have not heard this yet. Well done, gentlemen. I'm really impressed. Jagger, how are you? Pretty good, man. Excited to be here. How are you guys doing? Feeling good. Ready to talk some football, as always. Yeah, we got Damian Harris signing up, so now we have a 200 back on roster here in Buffalo, so ready to, <laughs> ready to, ready to run back the memories of that, uh, the win game there in Buffalo where Mac Jones threw the ball twice. Bring Damian <laughs> Harris in. Teach us the oh, ways. Yeah. I can't wait for that price to skyrocket so I can sell oh, my yes. three from shares. A, from a, from <laughs> dead to from dead to a dollar, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yes. Now today we're going to get into some other free agency updates, but before we do that, we'd like to have some fun with our guest and give them a little surprise question. Jagger, are you ready for your surprise question? I'm ready. Okay. Would you rather have all of your trades decided which side you take by a Twitter poll, or Decide all of your startup slash rookie draft picks by a Twitter poll. Oh God, the first one, my trades by Twitter poll, because okay. uh, drafts at least I can get value on my team, so I could start crafting. You know, yeah, like and then let them ruin it. But like, <laughs> like starting bad, you know, <laughs> with with a startup, I could I couldn't do it. Um, that's how you get Gabe Davis as like. <laughs> I love it. Skyler, real quick, if you had to pick, which one would you do? Oh, gosh. Uh, just retire. <laughs> really, really. Um, yeah, I, I'll agree with Jagger there. Yeah, I, I think I, I think that's where I would go to. At least you get to craft your team first. I'd be more that. content letting Good our offers. Discord. I'd be more content letting our Discord polls run my team. That that yeah. seems a little better. It was against yeah, some influence it. there. Yeah. It's like building a nice roster and then letting Bill O'Brien be the GM. You know, like that's what you <laughs> okay. do. If, if you want to get in on those uh, Discord polls, the link will be in the description. But let's talk about some of these free agency updates. We're starting off with Darren Waller. Dynasty League Football March startup ADP was tight end 10. Traded to the Giants for a third round pick. Turns 31 during the season. This last year dealt with some injuries. Was still tight end 8.5 PPR points per game. But that is the lowest he's finished in the last four years. I like him being traded to the Giants for the fact that he's probably the best target earner on that offense now. I, I, would, I would think that's a pretty fair assumption to make for him. The problem is how much they're going to pass with that offense. Daniel Jones, does he take a step forward as a pass? Or what's that going to be like? Jagger, how are we feeling about Darren Waller right now? I feel the same as I felt about him at the beginning of last year. Like, I still think that he's like in like the big four category of tight ends as far as like, if you're thinking about redraft or next year, I'm not going to overpay for him in dynasty. Cause like, he's already had trouble staying on the field. He is 31 and he's not Travis Kelsey. So like it, to me, this is a cut and dry answer. If you're trying to win, then you're, you're holding. And if you're trying to rebuild, you're selling, if you're playing dynasty, one thing I think this is telling and this, like tell me if I'm overthinking guys, but like uh, I see what type of team that Dayball is building for Daniel Jones, and it kind of fits his skill set. You have a large safety blanket across the middle of the field. If you have someone that doesn't have a big uh, a big arm to throw over the field, and then you have a thousand slot receivers, which are short area quickness guys, to where you can have those low eight dots, and they could do a lot of work for you. So it's just like. They they paid him the money of what Daniel Jones is is worth, in my opinion, if you think about today's QB market, and they're building a team to effectively hide his deficiencies. So I think this is good team building as far as you, you know you think about the quarterback situation. So as far as the actual player of Darren Waller, again, I'm not looking to buy him right now. You know, I could miss the boat, but I definitely like what it says as a team building standpoint as a whole. Yeah, I agree with that uh, 
that analysis of like what they're doing as a team building around Dan Jones, trying mm-hmm. to, you know, hide his deficiencies, as you kind yeah. of said. Uh, Skyler, uh, earlier in the offseason, we did an episode about tight end tiers, and we mentioned Darren Waller as his price in startups as he was falling, you know, to like the eighth round in some cases like that. We've said, hey, that's a good shot to make because he's still Darren Waller. He still has tons of upside. Uh, are, are we Are we still there? Do you still feel that way? Eighth is still early. When we were talking about before, he was sliding routinely past round 12, like round 13. Like I had just taken him one of our Discord startups. I took him in round 13 just simply because I was like, well, there's a non-zero chance he'd get traded. Did surprise me. Apparently, uh, the McDaniels wasn't inviting to Waller's wedding, which was within the week he got moved when he got married to Kelsey Plum out here, a player for Las Vegas Aces. So that did come as a little bit of surprise. I could imagine that really probably caught Waller off guard but yeah round eight is probably so, too early but i'm interested in darren waller the same range we were talking that rounds 10 to 12 tight end poach we get past that top 12 fine stab i mean really he could be a top five tight end next year uh it is just the age it's the only reason but it's banked into cost here so when we look at tight ends who could finish in top five next year we're looking for either 90 plus targets or greater than 10 touchdowns i don't think the 10 touchdowns are going to come unless the giants really take a step forward but 90 plus targets is extremely doable here as things stand everything we you guys mentioned about the room there. He seems to be the lead guy. The, he, they brought him in as the big body. It's what they really needed. We didn't know if it was going to come by means of a DeAndre Hopkins type player coming there via trade, which could still happen. I think it's less likely now. But Darren Waller was brought in to be kind of the big body target. Everyone else, they brought in guys who can either run deep or run through the slot, which is um, the Brian Dable special. Um, Josh Allen, when he joined the league during his tenure with Brian Dable, targeted the slot more than any other quarterback in the NFL over that span. Mm-hmm. I think that was more of a product simply of the coach and what he likes to do. And I think that's reinforced by all of these moves with them bringing back the guys who was there. They brought back Slayton as a field stretcher to sign Campbell to not basically nothing to either stretch or filter into the slot. They brought Shepard back, whether or not he's going to actually play we'll see. And then Wandell of course is still there. So I think that's very much part of the game plan is it's going to be a lot of what we saw last year, get the ball quick, limit dan jones deficiencies yep. as jagger said get the ball to saquon he's our main guy here and past that waller's a big target and everything else is underneath to the slot so i think it's probably the best spot darren waller could just find himself in because mm-hmm. the targets as things every, every as everything stands now should completely be there i mean even last season daniel bellinger was completely viable as a high tight end two streaming option when he was healthy simply because they needed they needed that body to get the targets to under Ethan Waller certainly is a better player than that. And him and him and Hodgins are the size on this team and uh, he should be featured accordingly. So I, I like to move a lot for Darren Waller. Uh, I wouldn't go out crazy and spend again. It's just an age thing, but if he's on your team, it's a significant bump. Uh, if you have a couple young guys on roster, maybe the Chiga Conquos, this is your chance to move on. If your team's not in that direction, get a nice price, get out for uh, maybe you get a, it would be nice in season if he starts well to get like a 25 first would be great but we'll probably settle for a collection of seconds here i think it's a it's a good spot for darren wall definitely got a boost it's one um it's one that you could have seen coming and i'm I'm happy it did happen jagger real quick um obviously the best time to be trading for darren waller was before the trade i think uh but if you were going to trade him, you've got a competing roster, but you're maybe just a little weak at tight end. What's the actual price you'd want to throw out that you think could get done that you're willing to do to get your on the team? Um, I wouldn't pay higher than a second one. Um, like that's the price of like, to me, a quality tight end in this year's draft. You think about the depth. So, you know, you got a, a proven commodity in Waller, but again, you know, I, I, I don't think it's like an exact slam dunk that like, like, like kind of like Skylar said, like, if you're going to, you know, pay them at a premium, there's a lot of risk that, that you're not baking into that cost. So a second gets it done for me, especially if I'm competing and I'm happy to get that in return. Cause like I said, there's plenty of young tight ends in this draft that I'm willing to pay a second round for. So it's kind of like recycling at the, at the position. Like this is a nice time to, to rinse out that your, your tight end room and get something new. If you're looking to rebuild. Skylar, do you agree with that? Yeah, honestly, I don't think Darren Waller is the type of player we're really going to use draft capital when we're looking to move. Mm -hmm. Uh, I picked up on a team that was really just missing a tight end at the end of last season when I thought I was done to a playoff team. I moved – actually, I was still going. I moved Ezekiel Elliott for 
Darren Waller straight up. And that manager got his touchdowns out of it. I got Darren Waller with the speculation of exactly what happened just happened. So that's where I'd more be looking to move off of. If you need some somebody who has a team need and they have Darren Waller kind of as excess because he's just been hanging around the last two years, that's where I think he's worth going after because you can move maybe later a player we – we're going to talk about like a Brandon Cooks. I think that a, a trade like that for certain managers would make a lot of sense. You need a tight end. Brandon Cooks, your wide receiver, five six. Go make that trade. You have Jamal Williams and a third. Like if you want to toss some capital in, that's the kind of move. Maybe somebody wants that RB two. If you had, you know, Khalil Herbert versus Darren Waller, and you need a tight end, Khalil Herbert's access. Maybe you work yeah. a package out involving that player. It's a like for like switch. I think that makes a lot more sense with Darren Waller, just given his age. If you are looking to acquire. I'm, I'm throwing out team need before I'm moving my draft capital. That's a little too risky. It's not the type of player I like to use the capital on. And if you're in like a softball league, like, like I got a couple in that I know I can get this done. Like I would go put out chick in a second and someone would be like, well, Darren Waller, you know, I like that, you know? And then you got like, like a young tight end and then like another young tight end. So it's almost like a two for one deal. But like, if you're in league with like some sharks, like you, that's probably not going to happen. That's wishful thinking. Yeah. Agreed. All right. Next up, we got Desmond Ritter. Dynasty League football, March startup ADP, QB 34, third round draft pick last year by the Falcons. He started four games to end 2022, but in those games, only averaged 9.9 points per game. Taylor Heineke signs to the Falcons. And to me, this looks a lot like they're setting up to roll into the year with that being their QB room. They're in a position where they have a good chance of missing out on the top four QBs of this draft class. They may not feel like they have the firepower to really go up and get one. Um, so now Desmond Ritter, I, I think like they're going to let, let him roll, see what happens. If they found something, they, then great. And if they didn't, they're set up well for 2024 when Drake may and Caleb Williams come into town and maybe they're able to get one of them. Skyler Desmond Ritter. What are we thinking right now? Yeah, Desmond is not really a player I want anything to do with. I'll be completely honest. Just what we saw last year. I mean, 63% complete percentage didn't kill you, but we're talking on six yards per target. Like he's he's getting the ball out and, and well, but all underneath the team floor to the run game. And Ritter wasn't a part of that. The whole selling point when you were taking Desmond Ritter, who was a outside of the first round quarterback in the second round of Eureka Jobs last year, was well, if he sees the field, we'll see a little bit of rushing. We didn't see that. We saw 16 yards per game last year. It that that is worrisome, right? Even a guy like Daniel Jones, who we don't consider a huge mobile quarterback, he was putting up prior to this season, you know, 20 to 30 yards. And that was the lower spectrum. Last year, obviously, he bumped up to around 40 and it significantly bumped his volume. If we're not going to get that from Desmond Ritter, we're we're pretty darn caps here because where you saw Atlanta struggle was the red zone. I mean, they weren't throwing touchdowns. He wasn't thriving there. The offense wasn't moving. And I think the leash is going to be really short. If you want a player who doesn't necessarily have the best red zone conversion percentages, but can get your team down the field, command a, a locker room, uh, just be solid, but not great. I mean, that's the Heineke type player. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's what it's going to be. And I, I would be surprised if Ritter beats him out for a job, potentially to start with Ritter. They give him a couple more games. They still want to see what it is, right? That was the whole like Jalen Hurts experiment. And his first year is if it's not going well, we're going to get the kid in there, get a small bit of a sample size to see if we um, are going to roll with this guy, go in the draft or give it another year. And Atlanta kind of played that game signing tiny key. It keeps our options open because if a player like Will Levis falls to pick eight, they could still take him. They could still take him at that spot, and Desmond Ritter is a complete afterthought because the draft capital spend on Desmond Ritter would indicate as much in his play didn't justify a further trial. Um, where if they if Levis is gone or they just don't want to go that route, if they're not in love with the player, they can roll into the season with a competition and try again in 2024, which they might be con be content doing. Um, I think Taylor Heineken makes a lot more sense. Like he might not have the ability, the arm talent that other quarterbacks do, but they're Kyle Pitts is a monster size wise. Kyle Pitts, monster size wise. You're bringing in Johnny. They got their backs. They just brought in Matt Collins. Like they, they're getting big boys. You don't necessarily yeah. need to finesse those good running team windows. Uh, it's going to be a good running team as well. So I, I will say, yes, the blocking aspect, the run game, and what we know from the head coach, this team's probably going to run the ball a lot. So I don't think Desmond Ritter excites me in just about any capacity. I, I think it's fine. Like if you get him, 
212, 301, that's fine because he is a starting quarterback. I would hope to be able to flip him if he does start a game for better than that. But he's just not someone I'm actively acquiring. If I need a quarterback, I don't view Desmond Ritter as my fix at the position. Uh, so I'm just not that interested. And if you can take this part of the offseason to move on, I'm good. I'm good. I don't, I don't, I didn't see significantly more from him than we would somebody like a Malik Willis. Yeah. I, prior to this, I had zero Ritter. And when it, when Heineke uh, signed, I actually decided, you know, what, I'm going to throw some thirds around in some leagues to see if I can get any Ritter off of that. Uh, just for the lottery ticket of if he does start a few games and it looks good, then I can, you know, hopefully make a profit off of it. I only got one deal done. It was that I traded the two twelve in a 14 team league for Ritter. So essentially a third round pick, uh, maybe something happens and I, and I gain a little value on that. That team also happens to be a rebuilder. So, uh, I, I was flush with draft capital going into that trade, but you know, I, I think like if you can get it done for that low price, I think it's kind of worth the shot just to see if it does start well and you're able to move it into something that you actually like asset wise. Um, Jagger, what do we think? Um, Skyler kind of took like you both kind of took a lot of the words out of my mouth. Like uh, you look at a team building standpoint and like you said, you see the size. It's kind of the same thing we talked about with Daniel Jones, you know, like um, initially when Ritter came out of the draft class, I comped him to like Tyrod Taylor. He doesn't have a talented arm and he has just enough mobility to make a difference, but not enough to be like any amount of huge upside for a team or fantasy. But you got large receivers that you can be a little bit inaccurate and they can see save you and bail you out, but you have massive blockers. They're going to run the ball a lot. It makes me worry about a lot of my Drake London shares, at least for the next season going forward. You know, like they could be rolling the dice again for when I think there's better talent in the quarterback a, a position next season. And like you said, they're in that range where it's probably too much to trade up for something, but they are still at least having a competitive team that's attractive to free agents. Cause that's what I try to explain to some people with when they don't understand these quarterback moves you know, like sometimes it's better to look okay. So you could bring in a free agent and say that, Hey, I got a QB ready team and we're going to get our guy in this draft, come over here. But uh, it's a sell window. That's all it is. It's a sell window. Like I have a couple of shares that I'm looking to move to people who think that they can win. And Desmond Ritter is going to be their guy. What's the price you're looking to get? Like what, what's the price where uh, it's just enough for you to sell and in anything less you'd rather just hold. I would want to get north of the 205 because like I think in season you you have the like week four when people get real desperate and someone gets hurt you have that in season value baked in where you can get like a, a higher pick um, but if I'm getting like the 201 I'd almost rather have Hendon Hooker or something like that like 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 I, I think I'd rather roll the dice there and feel like I can at least um, rinse that you know, rinse that asset and, and get something younger. So, and a little bit more secure. All right. Yeah. Let's I don't, think there's, oh, I don't think there's a guarantee that like a player, even like a Dorian Thompson Robinson going day three, couldn't have a similar <laughs> impact than a dead yeah. Ritter. I yeah. just don't view them like that. There's not, maybe not any quarterbacks who scream day two in the way that a couple fell last year. So if you want to take the stab there, right, instead of late second, if Hendon Hooker doesn't, as you mentioned, go kind of in hopefully round two, but nevertheless day two, then there's no one else in that range. And if you want a cheap stab at a potential starter, sure. I just don't think Ritter's set up to necessarily win that job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, and, you know, even on underdog, uh, Ritter is going very, very late, like almost to undrafted in, in these tournaments that are going on right now. So that kind of gives you an idea of what people drafting right now think of like his potential into the season, you know, going forward. Um, if you're not underdog yet, code JWB, you should be on there right now. First time deposit match up to $100. Helps you get ready for the season coming up and you can actually use it to start to project some people forward and you can possibly find some inefficiencies in the market that way. But yeah, I mean... Yeah. People aren't excited about him yet. I think it's That's, reminiscent of a few seasons ago with like a Dwayne Haskins when he was the last name. Rest in peace was mentioned in Washington and you had people sold that, you know, this would be the year for him to make make a name for himself. And that project didn't go too well. So that's if, if you're the 31st quarterback, 32nd quarterback getting taken off the redraft boards, 
um, I don't care that you're young. That's a screaming <laughs> indication of probably where you stand. Yeah, and that's what I was about to bring up. It's like like we've been talking X's and O's, but to bring up the statistics on it that like pretty much you need to be drafted in the first round for us to like really care. And then maybe in the second round, I'll care. After that, it's a wash because there's literally Russell Wilson and then a bunch of garbage cans. There's like there's yeah. nothing that is that is gonna be worth it. So like in your heart. You know, it's just like the people who love James Robinson and Damian Pierce. They are the quarterback version of these players. Like, to get out, get out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like last year, I did a study and went back and looked at every quarterback that didn't finish. They got at least five games under their belt in their rookie season or their first their first season where they played. They got at least five <laughs> opportunities and they didn't finish in the top 18. How many of those quarterbacks that qualified ended up um, quote recovering. We had a stats for that. It was like at least it was you got two points for a quarterback, one finish, one point for a quarterback, two finish. You need at least five points to quote recover. How many quarterbacks after three seasons end up recovering? And for quarterbacks outside of round one, that hit percentage was under 10%. Like the it's odds awful. are against you. Like I'm spitballing numbers there. Um, I can go over. I, I probably will when I update it for based off last year's quarterbacks, but that's not good. It's not good company. It's not good odds. Um, you're really hoping if Desmond Hitter hits, it's, it is an outlier. Yeah. One of, one of those only later round QBs who's actually turned out pretty good is Dak Prescott. And he just got a new weapon in Brandon Cooks, who's our next player for today. Dynasty League football, March startup ADP was wide receiver 54, the ever attainable Brandon Cooks. Trade to the Cowboys will turn 30 during the season. This last year, he did have a little bit of a down year. Uh, was kind of a messy year. There was a lot of talk like, will he be traded? He was, you know, uh, I think there was a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. He only had nine half PPR points per game last year, but 11.7 in 2021, 12.8 in 2020. He's kind of like been around those numbers for the entirety of his career. He's been kind of all reliable for us. Uh, now in Dallas, uh, there's a clear opening for him to be the wide receiver two after uh, C.D. Lamb there. High-powered offense. Maybe Mike McCarthy wants to tone that down a bit with all the talk that he's been doing about running the ball. But, Jagger, do we have any interest in Brandon Cooks right now? I think he's a very, very good uh, win-now team target. You know, like, like, like Brandon Cooks has never been expensive ever. So, like, if you need a wide receiver three or someone with upside – um, I would definitely target him on, on my roster. We know what he, what he is and like, and like Wyatt, you brought it up. Like I was going to say that this offense is going to go as far as Mike McCarthy is going to take it and like, take that as what you, what you will. Like in my opinion, like this offense has so much, uh, it has so much talent in it that he could fail upwards. Like, like it's to me, it's just, you got to do real, real bad to just not get anything out of, out of this team. So, yeah. Skyler, what do we think? Yeah, so with Brandon Cooks, um, this team could go down in passing times. I think we expect it to. We expect them to run the ball more. The offensive coordinator changed McCarthy call and plays. Kind of what they said they've liked to do to pair with Tony Pollard. We'll see what they do come draft and how if they do end up getting you know a partner for him there in Dallas. I expect they will. It's just been how high. Um, the consolidation of targets in this team should still allow Brandon Cooks to get enough volume over the course of a season to have a solid finish for you. With Michael Gallup being slow to return last year, not looking necessarily like the player we thought once he could be, and with Dalton Schultz leaving now today and now it's going signing with Houston, look where the ball is going to go. And I think Brandon Cooks is in line to be the number two target for this team where he doesn't have the ceiling. He's not going to come in. This isn't a player like DeAndre Hopkins that we mentioned earlier today in our last show that could come in to a team, demand 10 plus targets a game and win you your league in one season, right? Brandon Cooks is the win now veteran addition, but he's not huge upside. I'm not seeing this move and going, oh, now he's in a good offense. It's Brandon Cooks again. Let's go overspend. He's just an old like Deontay Johnson, right? What you're getting with a player that should give you pretty consistent wide receiver three production, wide receiver two spikes. And that's extremely valuable. I mean, a lot of managers see the age. And they fade these types of players. But at the end of the day, we have to set lineups. And a lot of us who have three wide receivers and two flexes, uh, Brandon Cooks is just a perfect player to slide in. Or those, he gives you a floor. You partner him with maybe another veteran in that tier. I would put like a Tyler Lockett. You get those two players for cheap, and one gives you a floor, one gives you a ceiling. They're both going to finish as 
potentially wide receiver twos at worst. I think wide receiver threes, if healthy for the season. And uh, that's really good value at cost here for Brandon Cooks. He's not necessarily somebody I'm going and targeting with draft capital, like we said, with Darren Waller. But if he's someone where that team that owns Brandon Cooks has a team need, uh, I'll see what I have, and we can make a mutually beneficial type of switch. I think that makes a lot of sense. Maybe I have a young player that I don't necessarily, uh, I'm not necessarily over the moon on. Maybe I have a Brian Robinson type player on my team, and there's somebody who doesn't think they're the most competitive who has Brandon Cooks or a Tyler Lockett. And we can make that switch. I, I can give you Brandon or Brian Robinson and you can give me Brandon Cooks. And maybe there's like a third, fourth swap on top if we want to get into perfect value or please the calculators. But in a vacuum, the meat of that trade, I think, benefits both teams. So that's probably where I'm looking to um, acquire Brandon Cooks. I will say for your 10 team leagues or your ones that only have 18 to 20 players on it. Uh, Brandon Cooks is a little less desirable simply just because of that ceiling. So if you do have draft capital, I would save it for more maybe swing for the fence type players. Um, but Brandon Cooks in your 12 team leagues, start 10 is very valuable for that flex, uh, the last flex spot on your team. Exactly. Jagger, I'm going to ask you some of this or that for Brandon Cooks. I've got DLF. Uh, start of ADP right here with me. Uh, would you rather have Brandon Cooks or Darnell Mooney? I think Brandon Cooks. I don't mind that one. I th- that one's that one's pretty close for me too. It, it Cooks. I, I, I think I'm landing Cooks now because let, that's a spicy landing spot there. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, Wandell Robinson or Cooks? Cooks. Okay, Juju Smith Schuster. Juju. Okay. Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers. Okay, so now we've we started to reach the spot here. Yeah. Okay. I think that I think that helps give people an idea of, you know, if you're if you're you know trying to move wide receiver, wide receiver, uh trying to find, you know, get some production maybe for some youth or somewhere in there between. It's nice to look at that sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like Wandell was one that hurt because I really liked him as a player. I just it's hard for me to like right now, I can't see it because they have ten of the same player on that roster. So, uh, like, I, like it's <laughs> I at least know what Cooks is, and like, so. Yeah, completely agree. I think team um, context for that one. Like, if I'm going yeah. Wandell, um, it, Wandell or Cooks, it probably depends on my team and like how yeah. I personally <clears throat> value. Yeah, you know which one you want. Every player you yeah. just mentioned, like. I literally have that a tier. Like I have at starting at wide receiver yeah. 46. I have Wandell, Lockett, Juju, Cooks, Myers, Mooney. Like that's the, that's yeah. how I have it. But it's the same grouping. The decision probably depends on personal preference or team build. W- one more name I'll, I'll throw out there. I think I know everyone's side of this, but I think it's something that you can get done in some leagues where there's still a truther there. And you might be able to send Sky more for Brandon Cooks right now. And that's something that I'd like to do. Oh yeah, especially I'm sure Sky Moore is one that was on a lot of even win now rosters because he was like a lot of people drafted him around that like one eleven and what yeah one twelve spot. So like that's a trade I would do because e- even if even if you're not winning, go do this because once the season starts, you can flip Brandon Cooks for something younger later. You know, like this is you know playing four D chess a little bit, but you know that's how you get an advantage. So. Yeah, yeah, I I think. Also, if there's a, any any hype still on Rashid Shahid, like there was seemingly a couple of weeks ago, where people are like, "This guy is," I'd rather have him over Mike Evans. I'm like, "You're freaking high!" But <laughs> if you could move uh, Rashid Shahid for Brandon Cooks, I like that move as well too. Like Shahid oh, could be yeah. literally a nobody, just like Sky Moore could. Um, where I like Shahid when he was free. Um, yeah, I know what Brandon Cooks is. It's different when we know Mike Th- Mike Thomas is coming back too. Yeah, like he's gonna get he's gonna be on that field. You know, like, like yeah. it, it's and like even the ghost of Mike Thomas is probably better than. You well, know, I didn't think Shahid uh, was going to make two wide receiver sets anyway. You know. Yeah. yeah. But it really pushes down his snaps when you know that he'll be yeah. there, which is unfortunate yeah. for him. All right, Jagger, thank you very much for coming on and doing this with us. Before thank we get out of here, is there anything you'd like to promote? 
Uh, nothing, man. Like, uh, just go follow me on Twitter at Fantasy Blue, Blue Chip. That's why all my stuff's on there. Um, I'll be putting out more content for DLF. I'm still like halfway out of DFF. We have our our uh, rookie guide coming out. So, like, uh, like that's like 50 prospects. I've been working on that thing for like three months. So I gotta like awesome. roll that roll that out. So uh, yeah, um, that's it for me. Yeah, Jagger is definitely worth the follow. Uh, great conversation every day with him so you should be following him as for us scholar you can find him at bff buffalo you can find me at yb underscore ff you can find jwb at jwb underscore ff and all of our content at jwb fancyful.com while you're here like subscribe follow jump on the discord the link is in the description we'll see you next time